In PTC MathCAD, you can perform an exponential regression of a data set. In a previous video, I used a linear regression to take a look at my YouTube history. I have my data for the number of days since the start of my channel and the number of minutes. Hey, let's hop over to what I got from MathCAD. And so you can see the results of the linear regression in the chart component. Hey, it is not matching the data closely at all, but this looks more like exponential growth. Just a hint, I am not getting exponential growth in my channel, but let's take a look at doing an exponential regression. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's grab this chart component and move it down on the sheet. Let me just click on it there. Now I've got it. I'm just using the down arrow on the keyboard. I'm just trying to give myself a little more space where I can put in my calculations for the exponential regression. Let's also do a little of rearranging. I'm going to move some of the information over to the right so I can throw in a text box. You should really document your calculations as you go. And so let's put in some text here for the linear fit. And then let's see right about over here, we'll put in the information for the exponential fit. So let's put in a text box here and I'll put in exponential fit and we can grab the side of it and make it a little narrower. All right, so now I'm gonna start out by using my exponential fit function. To show you that, let's go to the functions tab. If you go to the curve fitting and smoothing group, we have the exponential fit function right here, EXPFIT, and there are three different arguments that it can take. It'll be the vector of X values and the vector of Y values. And there's also, in the tooltip, it says that the optional vector VG contains guess values for the three coefficients. Hey, I have no idea what the coefficients are. I'm not going to guess. Okay, so let's type in the name of our variable. I will call exp prediction. This is going to be equal to, and we'll go to our curve fitting and smoothing, select the function. And so the first argument will be days, the vector that I created in the previous video. The next one is going to be minutes, but we're not going to have a third one because again, I am not going to predict. So I just use the backspace to get rid of the third argument. Let's move out to the side and then do exp pred equals. And so these are the three coefficients that we are going to have in our exponential function. So the exponential function that we are going to graph is going to be the first coefficient times e to the second coefficient times x plus the third coefficient. So let's make our function. So I will call this my exponential prediction function as a function of x. This is going to be equal to, and so the first coefficient is exp pred and to get the first member of the vector i'm going to use the left bracket that's the matrix operator and i'll use the number one and then i'm going to use the right arrow so that i can put in my next operator which will be multiply times e the variable e and then e raised to the power so i will use shift six to get the power and this is going to be the second coefficient so let's type in exp pred and then once again i will use the left bracket for the matrix operator and this will be the second element in the matrix and so we'll multiply that times x our value that's going to be passed over here and then let me right click so I get to the right side of my expression. Then I'll use the plus and it's going to be this value over here. So that's EXP PRED. Once again, I will use the left bracket so I can get the matrix operator and this will be the third value. 
So everything's going to be shifted by, looks like, what, about 84, 800, I don't know, uh, by this value over here, 840,000 minutes. Uh, but let's see what this looks like in the graph. So I will scroll down over to the graph. Hey, let's make this whole thing a little bit wider. And let me grab these two and move them over to the left. Give myself a little bit more space. And then I will left click on the sheet. Let's add in a third x axis expression. And this one will be range, just like I have for my linear function. Let's click over here and then insert a y axis expression. And this is going to be my nice short variable name or function name, EPF, and then parentheses of range. And then when I click outside, hey, there we can see the fitting of the exponential function. And it's matching the data pretty closely. Hey, I really wish I would actually see the this kind of result, but I'm telling you right now it is summer also. We were getting some relief from the coronavirus, so my numbers are nothing like this right now. But let's do some updating to our chart component. I will double click on it. And here we have the chart component editor. Let's zoom in a little bit. And the first thing, let's go to our third trace. I'm going to change the color from that flat purple. Let's go to a nice bright green and change the style to a dash style. Now I'll leave it with that little thickness, just so you can sort of see both lines almost on top of each other. Also, I wanna have a legend because right now I've got three different traces in here. I don't know what each of those are. Let's go to the setup. And the name for this right now is three. Let me change that to exponential fit. And let's go to the second trace and click on the setup tab underneath there and change its name to linear fit. And let's go to the setup for the first trace and we'll call this real data. Now I can go to the tab for the formatting of the chart. Here we have our legend tab. Let's check the box to have a legend. I don't like it down there at the bottom. Let's put it at the top, but I also want to have it on the left side. And let's change this from three columns. I'll use the drop down list to change to one column. So that that's pretty nice. Let's just make it a little bit smaller though. I like the way that that looks as my legend. Let's click the X to close out of the chart component. And by the way, you can always collapse the inputs just so that you have the chart component alone. And so that's how I can use MathCAD's exponential regression function in order to analyze my data. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.